if you want to know how to work your core plays into your lineups using SaberSim, I'm going to break that down for you in this video. My name is Andrew. I am one of the coaches over here at SaberSim. First, we should start off by talking about what is a core play. A core play or core plays are any number of players that you want to be the center of your strategy for a slate. These will often be players you have the most exposure to. For MLB, it could be two specific pitchers and one hitter. It could be a specific team that you want to use as your primary stack for this slate. And maybe you even have opinions about which players from that team you want to be in the stack. So we're going to walk through three different ways of achieving this goal and building around a core group of players and talk about the pros and cons of each option. But the first option we are going to talk about will apply a uh, min exposure to a player or your group of players here. So what we're going to do is we are going to come into the app. Uh, maybe your core plays are Shane McClanahan, Freddie Peralta at pitcher. So I'm going to go to this min exposure column here. I'm going to put in 50% saying I want 50% exposure to each of these plays. And then I'm going to go in and put 50% exposure to Ronald Acuna and include him as part of my core here. What this will do is it will guarantee that each player is used in a specific percentage of your pool of lineups here. So 50% min exposure in a 500 lineup build will mean that each player gets put into 250 of your 500 lineups here at a baseline. A pro of using this method is that you will get the best lineups from the Sims that include these players. A con of this method is that this will not guarantee that the players are used together, but that they end up in a certain percentage of your lineups overall here. So there's definitely going to be some overlap, but it is not guaranteed that they're all used at the same at the same time in each and every lineup. Second option here it, we are going to cover is handling this through a projection adjustment. What this method entails is adjusting players' fantasy point projections by, let's say, 10 to 20% here in the home screen. A pro of using this method is that it allows the builder much more flexibility here. The builder will ultimately decide if the player is worth putting into your lineups, even with the projection adjustment. A con of this method is that you may be double counting if you are boosting a player due to the game having good weather and the Saberson model already takes into account weather. So then you are double counting in that respect, but exercise caution with some of the adjustments that you are making there. But ultimately this is a good method for somebody who has some takes, but not super strong takes and kind of wants Saberson to ultimately be the decision maker at the end of this process. And the last option that we're going to cover here is handling this with a lineup rule. A pro for lineup rules is that this will give you exactly what you want. If your goal is to play your entire core group of players together in every lineup. So say I have those three players here. I'm going to go to lineup rules. I'm going to go to add new rule. And then I'm going to do a group rule, a manual rule. I'm going to say use at least three because I'm going to put my three players in here. And that's going to be Acuna. That's going to be Shane McClanahan and Freddie Peralta. And then I'm going to save that rule. So then now what this rule will do is make sure that all three players are used in each and every lineup that is built. A pro for this is that the lineup rules is that this will give you exactly what you want if your goal is to play all of these players together in each and every lineup that you make. A con of this method is that you are essentially overriding the Sims. The Sims may want to put another player into your lineups based on what the sim outputs are but because of your rule the builder will have to swap out the plays that it wants with the plays that you were saying must be in each and every lineup here so a note of caution is that if you are doing research and your research is not strong not grounded in uh predictive analysis here you're going to ultimately end up hurting your lineup. So exercise caution in that respect. Uh, some tips with this method is that, you know, if, if you say use at least three here and there's only three players, they're going to get put into 100% of your lineups. Say you have a little bit of a bigger core. Say you have, you know, six players here where you have a couple additional hitters. Uh, 
you could have six players in this core and say use at least three. This is going to give the builder a little more flexibility here and allow it to decide which three it uh, most closely aligns with the sim outputs and then put those players in the sim. So the only thing with this is that you're not going to get equal exposure to all of these plays, but you are going to get exposure to all of them across your pool. And that should be enough to fill out your lineups uh, with the percent exposures that you want in the post build here. And that is three different ways to build lineups around a core group of players using SaberSim. As always, if you have any questions about any of the methods we use today, do not hesitate to reach out to us at support at sabersim.com. Take care.